Welcome back. Thought it might be helpful to revisit the RSI, uh, that's a relative strength index, uh, which measures the strength of the market, especially because as of late, the markets have been very trendy. The white line is the S&P 500. The red area chart in the background, that's the RSI. Now, it measures the relative strength of the market on a scale of 0 to 100. Uh, readings above 70 are considered overbought, but not necessarily does that mean that it's about to go down. Readings below 30 are considered oversold, but even an oversold condition does not mean the market's going to go up either. But we should make note that it is a quite an unusual situation to have the market above the R, the RSI above 70, which is exactly where we are now. Uh, the RSI uh, with the S&P 500 uh, trending above 4,500, 4,566 or so, uh, the RSI is well above 70, uh, probably in the 75, almost 80 level. Now, we can see, generally speaking, when the RSI crosses below 30, the SP 500 hits very significant lows, as it did October of last year. Uh, and then when the RSI, now the buy signal occurs when the RSI crosses below and back above 30. Conversely, when the RSI crosses above and back below 70, that's typically an area where traders will either sell short or at least take profits on long positions. But with that said, when the RSI crosses above 70, it means that the, the market's very directional, and it certainly can go up higher. This is what the RSI looked like in 2019, S&P 500 in white. Uh, the RSI, or the I should say the S&P 500, hit highs around 30, uh, 3026, a little over 3,000. The RSI did not go above 70 at that point. It doesn't necessarily always have to go above 70. Uh, but we can see eventually when the RSI did cross back below the 70 level, that did mark the reversal on the S&P 500. This is what we look like a little bit more long term. Uh, and we can see we're in a pretty parabolic situation over here uh, where the RSI is about as high as it's been in a long time. It's maybe been a little bit higher if we go back to the areas of uh, late 2021, early 22, when the NASDAQ, or actually the NASDAQ, but also the S&P 500 hit those historic highs. Uh, and certainly, we also saw very significant highs late uh, 2019, early or mid-2020, we should say. Now, the market will go higher, but when the RSI crosses above 70, it indicates that you know there's been a lot of buying and that the, now the probability is of uh, a near-term reversal. Now, as rosy as things may seem in terms of uh, the stock market, there is an underlying fundamental condition that we cannot ignore. Uh, one of such is the mortgage spread. What's the mortgage spread? It's a comparison of the 30-year average mortgage rate to the 10-year U.S. Treasury. Basically, the 30-year mortgage uh, minus the 10-year Treasury bond. 30-year average mortgage is very close to the 30-year Treasury bond, but there's a little bit of premium added on to that for the sake uh, that it is a mortgage, it's the average mortgage rate, so it's not the pure 30-year treasury. What is important to note is a mortgage spreads typically widen before or during recessions. You see what happens is when the banks you know, smell trouble out there on the horizon, what they'll do is they'll add a little bit of premium, a little bit of extra insurance for themselves to mortgage rates. They'll say, well, mortgage rates, a 30-year bond, let's say, is at 5% or whatever, you know. And normally, the average mortgage rate may be 55 but we're going to charge 575 We're going to charge 6% because they see an extra amount of risk. What's the risk? That they'll extend a mortgage out today to a consumer, and that consumer may run into economic difficulty and not be able to pay back that loan. So they add on the premium. That's why the mortgage spread is so important because it reflects the premium, the extra insurance that the banks are adding on. Here we see the blue area chart is a 30-year mortgage. That's the average mortgage rate. The, the red area chart below that is a 10-year U.S. Treasury. The difference between the two is a mortgage spread, which is reflected in white. The higher the white line goes, the more of a difference we see between the 30-year mortgage, the blue area chart, and the 10-year bond, the red area chart. So we can see 
uh, for example, December 2022, uh, the mortgage spread was only at 239, 2.39%. And again, all that is is the average 30-year mortgage minus a 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. Well, at that period of time, there was a relatively lower amount of risk because we can see that the 30-year mortgage was closer to the 10-year Treasury. As of right now, we're sitting at a 316 yield, 3.16% difference, which is a very big high uh, that we have not seen in quite a while. Uh, and that really does reflect the amount of uh, nervousness that the banks are experiencing right now. Here's a 30-year mortgage in blue, uh, the 10-year U.S. Treasury in red, and the mortgage spread. This is a little bit of a long-term outlook going back to 2013. Take a look to see how parabolic these mortgage spreads are. Right now, again, we're around 316-ish. This is the highest level we've seen in many, many years. Now, you know, late 2019, early 2020, we had that COVID uh, crisis. Mortgage spreads at that time were barely 3%. Put that in perspective, we have more of a risk, or the banks at least at least see more of a risk now than we've seen in a very, very long time. And that's something we certainly should make note of. Here's the S&P 500 in red, the mortgage spread in blue. Again, the blue line reflects the difference between 30-year average mortgage, 10-year bonds, Generally speaking, we see an inverse correlation, an opposite correlation. When the stock market goes up, the mortgage spreads go down. When the stock market goes down, mortgage spreads go up. Mortgage spread is the risk. Well, what's happening right now? S&P 500 is chugging along near highs. Hey, the RSI is above 70. Things look really good. Why are the mortgage spreads not going down? And that really is the question. Why are mortgage spreads so high if the stock market is still so high? Because historically, usually we see the opposite. So look at, take a look at the S&P 500, early 22, late 21, early 22, yeah. S&P 500 hit those very big highs. Mortgage spreads were at 126. Why, if with a stock market, the S&P 500 is knocking at the door of all-time highs, why are mortgage spreads also near all-time highs. There's a disconnect. Now, we can look at interest rates and the anticipation of inflation and, you know, all these other economic numbers we watch. There's a lot of conclusions we, we may draw from this. You know, who knows if that conclusion is, is correct or not, but the data does not lie. You know, the data shows us that the banks see risk out there. So keeping in mind the S&P 500 is so lofty right now at such lofty levels now it's not a recommendation to get out of the stock market after all it is strong but more information uh really uh adds to our favor uh here are the average mortgage spreads going back to 2014 the one at the top that's january february so on and so forth 2023 well let's go back first uh, 2018 was a good year january the average mortgage spread for the month of january is 145 february 147 march 161 the average for 2018 was 163 the average for 2019 was 180 2020 well we had that covid crisis average mortgage spreads for the month of march went to 258 april 267 Average for the year 223. 2021 was recovery. 2022, well, we saw some risk. Take a look at where we are now in 2023. January, average mortgage spread, 275, 249. In February, March, 291. June, 297. So far for July, 295. The average mortgage spread. And I believe historically over the past decade or so, the average spread it could be around, I think, 170, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely much lower than we are now. The average spread for this year so far is 282. So this is not the result of just one bank miscalculating the economy, uh, or is it a short-term situation? There, there's long-term, very strong macroeconomic forces at, at play. What this means. You know, only the data will reveal to us, you know, eventually. Uh, but please be aware, behind a very strong stock market, you know, there are some fundamental contradictions in mind. 
We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.